Welcome fellow travelers, Mod Maven here, and the time has come to talk about how I go about finding paradise planets. With quintillions of planets out there in the verse, I hope that these time-saving tips and tricks can help you along your journey. Let's get to it. When discussing how to find paradise planets, I believe it makes sense to first talk about what a paradise planet actually is. The term paradise can often be used in different contexts to mean different things. You may see a forum post where someone refers to finding their personal favorite paradise planet. Another post may refer to a planet as being a paradise, but then mentions that it has storms. These different uses of the term paradise may leave novice or even veteran players alike of No Man's Sky slightly confused. Let's clear some things up with a few key points. Number one, a paradise planet is a type of lush biome planet that, when scanned from space, says paradise planet. <laughs> That's really it. There are many other types of lush biome planets such as humid, overgrown, grassy, etc. But a true paradise planet is just that, a paradise planet. Two, a true paradise planet will have no storms. All other lush biome planets do have storms. It may say anything in the visor down on the planet about the weather, but they do not have storms. 3. A true paradise planet will only have sentinels by secure buildings. Again, in the visor it could say anything, but often will refer to sentinels as remote or limited. They'll not bother you when building or gathering resources. So now that we've defined what a paradise planet is, let's chat a minute about what your goals are when going out to find a paradise planet. These goals are really important because they can drastically change how you go about looking for them. After a thousand plus hours in the game and almost a year of weekly paradise planet reviews, I hope my goals and tips can help you simplify how you go about this process. Whenever I go about searching for a paradise planet in the galaxy map, my goals are the following. Number one, water. I like to have water on my paradise planets. <laughs> Number two, a tier three economy. In a tier three economy, any cool ships and multi-tools I find have a better chance to be S-class. The extra resources for sale helps too. And that's really it. Let's go into the galaxy map to show you what I mean, and we can cover some tips there to help you save time. And that's what it's all about really here, saving time. There are quintillions of planets and we need to have a way of boiling this down to something more manageable. So the first thing I want to do is change my destination over to Galactic Core. This gives me a line to move along and show progress as I get closer. We have to have some sort of guide or we will get completely lost and just be running around in circles. Now deselect the current system so you can freely move around. Highlight different systems along the line to the center looking for systems that match our criteria. Again, water and a tier three economy. This assumes you have an economy scanner in your ship. If you don't have one, just go and get one. <laughs> You'll need it. Now, as we're moving around looking for systems, there will definitely be systems we miss that match our criteria. That's okay. Use the line as a guide but don't be afraid to zoom into another area of space and get a little more granular if you want. We have to accept that we'll miss some potential great systems. The goal here really is to get as many systems analyzed as possible in the playtime we have. I hear you in the back there asking about the stellar class of the system. What about that? Yellow star systems with the F or G at the start do indeed have a higher chance of spawning a lush planet just some sort of lush planet, but they are also the most prevalent star type in Euclid. Just zoom around in the map and you'll see that a ton of the systems start with an F or a G. The number listed with the temperature of the system is also something commonly looked at. Zero being hottest and nine being coldest. Don't worry about that either. Think about it this way. The main criteria we care about is water and a tier three economy. Would we not visit a system because of the temperature? <laughs> While that can be a very rough guide, we don't exclude it because of that. If it has water and a tier 3 economy, we go. Now that we've found a system that we may want to check out, let's select it. You'll notice as it's zooming in that you'll start to see rings for the system. You can quickly count the rings to see how many planets are in the system and then select again to warp there. 
This will give you a slight head start as you warp in, but don't spend too much time on it. We are still going to go there. Now that we're in the system, let's set ourselves up for time-saving success with a couple of things. One, make sure you're in first-person view in your ship. This gives us the radar at the bottom to see where the planets are in the system. Second, go over to your log and set your current secondary mission to Exploration Guide. This will give us a planet count on the right hand side of the screen as a reminder. This stuff just needs to be done once and will help a lot. Okay, so now let's take a visual look at these planets. But before we do, let's talk about this radar we mentioned a second ago. Down at the bottom of your screen, in first person view in your ship, you have basically an outline of each planet in the system, those little circles. As you move your ship, you will see these outlines move. The lower half circle represents you looking straight out the front of your ship. So if you line that lower half circle up where it's cutting one of those planet outlines in half, you should be staring straight at it. Keep in mind you may see planet outlines inside of others. This means that the planet is in front of or behind the other planet. We may need to pulse around to see all the planets in the system. Okay, let's just look out the front of our ship as we're pivoting our ship around with that radar as guide. We're looking for a few things here. One, rocky planets. They just don't look lush. A lot of gray, dusty looking areas. <laughs> You'll get better at this as you see more planets. Don't even bother scanning them. Two, icy planets. These are going to be bright white and kind of reflective. Sometimes it's a bluish white, but they're pretty easy to spot as it's a bright white or bluish white. Number three is storms. If a planet is storming, it'll look like it's grayed over from a distance. Any solid gray planets are having a storm and can't be paradise planets. These storms are often synchronized across planets in the system, and you may be able to eliminate several just on that basis alone. All three of these things are very common and fairly easy to spot. Don't even scan the planets, it's not worth the time. There are certainly planets in the system that may be visible, but because of the position of the local sun for that system, we can't really see what they look like. We'll just have to scan those to see what they are. So what about those planets I can't see? There may be some planets behind others in the system, and we'll need to pulse to see them. Leave those for last, as we'll scan those on the way out as we leave. After eliminating some planets, let's scan the ones that might be a lush planet. Of course, we're only looking for planets that say paradise planets. You may be tempted to check out some other lush planets, and that's totally fine. We're supposed to have fun with this discovery. Go for it. Just realize that it's a trade-off with how many systems we can get scanned in a play session. Okay, so now let's talk a minute about those planets you can't see yet that we were talking about earlier and what we can do about that. If there's a planet in the way, use the lower half circle to position your ship so that the line bisects the hidden planet. Then rotate left or right to the edge of the planet blocking it. Now let's pulse. Did you know you can scan a planet while you're pulsing? Let me show you. As we pulse and come around the planet that is blocking, we just need to move our view around so that the hidden planet is in view. While we're still pulsing, we can scan it and see what it is. This is where it can be really helpful to have a ship with a more round type of cockpit design as it lets us see more around us. After our scan, if it's not a paradise planet, we can then go to the galaxy map while still pulsing to choose a new system. During all this pivoting around and looking, what if I hear hostile scan? Don't worry, you can make a scan fail by entering the atmosphere of the nearest planet. Just turn towards it and pulse. A lot of times when you come into these systems, you'll be pretty close to a larger planet in the system. The scan will also fail if you enter the space station that should also be close by. Lastly, you can avoid a scan by just warping away. Now, you have to be careful with this one, as the default option is the communicator if you're being scanned. We don't want to talk to these jerks, we just want to use the galaxy map. The galaxy map really kind of acts like a pause screen as you can bring it up during a scan or pulsing like we mentioned a minute ago. With the time saving tips, I have mentioned you can often be ready to move on to another system by the time you see that hostile scan warning. 
As we're scanning those planets that may be lush, what if we do find a paradise planet? As this is more of a guide for finding them to begin with, I'll be brief, but pulse through the atmosphere of the planet on the light side of the planet and get your scanner out again. Choose to look for a trading post. You look for the trading post while you're close to the ground so that it will find you a trading post on this paradise planet. Now, pivot your ship around to where you can see the icon of the marked trading post. Point your ship nose straight up and break, break atmosphere. Now, point the ship nose straight back down and you should still see the trading post marker right in the middle. Don't move left or right. This will be the quickest way to get to that trading post. Pulse to the trading post just above the atmosphere and you can park for free. <laughs> At this point, you should have a good idea of the colors and some of the characteristics of the planet. Proceed to scan a few things like fauna and get a feel for the place. Don't forget that you can go to photo mode and move the sun to check and see if anything glows at night. Just move it to the opposite side of the planet or basically at your feet. Check twice a few seconds apart as often the glowing will have a certain rhythm to it. I hope that this guide has helped and I would summarize it like this. Decide on what criteria you want to use for looking. In my case, tier 3 economy and water, and just go with that. Use some of the tips we talked about to quickly determine the planet types in each system, and then move on. It's all about getting our chunk of the quintillions of planets explored without going crazy. See you out there, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe, or better yet, leave a comment below on how you look for paradise planets. See you next time.